All right, well. Oh, the redemption arc. Um, I'm listening currently to the IE 600s. The Sennheiser 700, wait, 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 $799 seven millimeter single dynamic IEMs, which if you recall in this channel, I already did the IE 300, 200 bucks. They're over there on the shelf because I like them. I liked them a lot. I really did like them. But then I did the Sennheiser IE 900s, which are 15 fuck you hundred dollars. And those, um, there's too much competition to say that those were $1,500. They were very good. They were better than the 300s, but they weren't like, never buy nanas. Are you insane? Like, no, no. So now, almost half price. But still, seven, you know, hundred dollars, right? Hundred dollars. But they actually sound it. I was sort of spoiled by this review because uh, a user sent these in. Because sometimes it doesn't send me things. They sent me the fifth, the uh, the big ones, and I was like, eh, and then they didn't send me these. But these, um, actually are enjoyable to listen to. One of the one of the remarkable things is to have a dynamic that's only seven millimeter. That's another thing. The IE three hundred and the IE nine hundred, huge distance apart in price. Same seven millimeter driver. You would think that they would do like, oh, maybe it's a bigger driver, or maybe it's a different configuration, a driver and a balanced armature. Nope. Sennheiser is very German and they're very OCD, and I kind of am okay with that because you've got the IE three hundred i600 i900 that's the same amount in gap and then you have you know two hundred dollars and eight hundred dollars and fifteen hundred dollars which is i don't want to do the math but these don't sit these are better than the i900s i can tell you right away because i want to listen to them i want to just keep shoveling through my track i'm in the best bass playlist right now trying to get the really bassy stuff because when you deal with a seven millimeter the concern is okay. You're taking. You're not getting a ten. Most other you know dynamics are a ten. Some of them are even bigger, like fourteen. But this is a seven, seven. But the base is good. Here, let me show you what they look like. In case you forgot. In case this picture on the box is not enough, they are really small. Like the, here, I'll unplug it from the case. That is a small little thing, and it's a um. It looks like it's a uh, sandblasted. Stand sandblasted like pewter. The 900s were like machined out of aluminum. You could see the marks. The 300s were just, you know, this but black metal. And this is actually a pretty nice feel. It looks good. Um, so it's extremely tiny. And one of the things that was the same with the 300s and the 900s and now the 600s is you can't really change tips. I'm a big Dakoni tip fan. I have a whole box here. Whenever it's time to do a review, I was like, all right, I pick out one of these sets of Dakoni tips and put them in there. The problem with any other tip is that there's a hole through it, which is like, well, Zio, don't you want a hole through your tip? Yeah, but this is Germany we're talking about here. Most Chinese IMs are like, all right, you're gonna wanna change tips. But you go and you get the this selection, which comes in this piece of plastic that has sharp fucking teeth. So it sticks into the foam in the box and you pull it out like this, it literally has points. But all of these tips don't have a hole in them. In fact, if we pull one out, you can see um, just barely any light through there because there is a silicone web and then actual foam on behind the web, preventing it from letting certain frequencies through. This is part of the tuning. So if you swap it out, you get rid of some of the tuning and all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's a little bit too bright for me. Oh, and then you die. So we're using these stock tips. I'm using these stock cables, which I... I'm okay with the stock cables. I mean, we're talking about a very expensive set of IEMs. It's the exact same cable for the 300 and the 900 and now the 600. It's just, uh, at least this came with two. We have a 4.4 Pentacon plugged into the Wall Oven Topaz, which is like my go-to for IEMs. Cause it usually just like, it'll hide a little bit of the, of the skankness, the skankiness, you understand. It's just like, mm, it's like nice, it's nice. It's like, you know, you sit in the car, you got some nice lotion. This is like burning incense with your IEMs, this, this amp. And I've tried on other ones, but it's just, I want it to be on this. Here is the 3.5 millimeter cable. It is the exact same cable. Single, very smooth. I don't even know what you, I want to call, call it rubber, but I don't want to call it plastic. It's very nice. 
and like no jank is possible. Big split. Here's your slider. Little Sennheiser logo on there. Is that covered by plastic? Like it's protected? I don't know. It's very, very small. Um, comes up, you have these flexible uh, memory, basically wire ties in here that just, okay, if you want, you have to get it right. Just like the IE900 and the IE300, depending on how your ear is shaped, you can shape this differently. And when you shape it, you had better make sure it stays that shape because the next time you put it in, if it's like that, it's going to just be like, what is happening to my head? So take this off. Look how small this thing is. There, it's actually got the same pattern here as here. So it's like double filtering. And you can't mess with it. It's a Sennheiser and they're fucking pads. Never mess with our pads. Never mess with our tips. I'm going to put this back in because I want to wax lyrical about what an actual experience for sound is. Because I'm pretty sure on the i900, I haven't rewatched that video and I haven't heard those since I reviewed them. I was like, yeah, these are very, very detailed and they sound better than the 300s and they're not worth $1,500. But the 300s were like, all right, this is like a real, like I'm impressed by the bass and the low end. And they're not as detailed as like, you know, obviously more expensive stuff like clairvoyance, um, a lot of the thigh audio stuff, uh, the nanas and things like that. So these are in the wheelhouse of not just the nanas, but my new fucking love of my life, the Dunu Zen Pro. Dunu Zen Pro is 900, Dunu Zen is 700, these are eight. These, these are right between the, the boys the boys, the um, the main difference being the efficiency. The Dunu Zens and Dunu Zens Pro are used to listen to amplifiers to assess amplifier quality. These, uh, you need a, f I, I could literally, I'm on here, I'm on Rob Dugan, Too Quiet. Send me something louder, there we go. South Park, Timmy and the Lords of the Underworld. We're on low gain, but I can take it like to 12 noon. It's very loud at noon, but on the Dino Zens, it was like, ah, dead. And here it's like, is it playing? Because you have such a small driver that you have to push more power into it. The Lords of the Underworld. Darkness fills my heart with pain. Timmy. Um, it does a wonderful presentation of placement of sound. Like the drums are playing epic score, blah, 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 blah. and they're not. It doesn't sound like I'm listening to left and right channels. It sounds like I'm listening to a room with someone playing drums in it. I'm trying to listen to the echo. The echo is the echo is what tells me. If you ever want to know what Zeus is actually honing in on, I don't listen to the sound of a drum being hit. I listen to the sound of a drum being hit, and then the flash into the room. It, it will. Do I hear? the space this was recorded in. Because a good I am that these are, you can tell the shape of the room they've been in. That someone was singing in, like, oh, they're singing. What size room? 19 by 13 by five foot ceilings. It's like a crawl space. And then there's soft furniture. You put your hand in your ear. The soft furniture in the left-hand side. And there's mildew behind the toilet. That's how detailed the I am can get with music. These are just a gentle, these are a gentle and smooth audiophile I am. These are more audiophile than the 900s. The 900s were clinical. They were very capable, but very clinical. These actually make me want to just keep next track. Ooh, Ninja Scroll. One of those like late 80s, early 90s Japanese OSTs with like the the weird flute, like the clarinet in it. I want to say these these sound like a set of IEMs I'd want to listen to classical, not classical music, but like 1970s and 1960s live recordings of Broadway musicals. Don't know why, all right? Zio just lets this shit come to his head and then it falls out his mouth. But there's something about, like, it's like a storytelling I am. I don't think, when I talked about the Dunu Zens, because I have to compare to that, because this is a solo review, one I am. And I usually don't do solo reviews unless it's a benchmark I am. I'm not going to mark this as a benchmark. We're too close in price to other things. And this is a very specific flavor. This is a Cuban cigar 
scotch I am. I want to drink a, gl a glass of scotch, no rot, just just neat, and I want a Cuban cigar that I'm not smoking, but I want it lit and placed over there. And then I want to be in like a, a dark wooden room with a bunch of books that I'll never fucking read. And I want to hear, I want to listen to an audio book. That's the strangest fucking desire. I don't have this desire, but I want to listen to an audio book. Just being told to me with like some deep, deep rumbly voice just telling me about it. I want to hear, I can hear his pages turning in the, uh, in the recording studio. These are like flashback IMs. I know, it's a, I, I didn't promise you I don't do drugs, but I'm just listening to them like over and over again and I got still got Ninja Scroll on. And it's like, when you have a flashback and you see someone's telling you the story and the music comes in, that weird like surreal feeling of, there was no real music when this was happening in my memory, but we've added it. This is adding music to real life. Paradox, oh, that's that's overblown as hell. Hold on. Amazing bass reproduction for a seven millimeter. Mumbasa Inception. I will say that I wish that there was more sizes because they had large, medium, and small. Most times I'm a large in the right and a medium on the left. I put a large in the right, medium in the left, and the left one wasn't fitting. So I had to put a large in the left. Now that they're both in and the large fits good in the left, I want an extra large in the right. And they don't make an extra large. So I just keep I just keep touching it. Just like get it. Ah. Oh, ah. Oh. Once it seats, it is so good. Whoa. What is this? Best of Chesky Jazz. Converter resolution testing, no dithering. It's just like a ding. It's like a it's someone hitting a xylophone from left to right, and I could hear every space they're hitting it. So I guess this is the best IEM Sennheiser makes. I mean, they made that one, I think it showed up in the Amazon results when I was searching for it. The IE800s, those IE800S, it's like the only thing, like what do you think about the IE800S? No, IE300s or 200 is a steal. I-900 to 1400 is a rip. These make perfect sense. Prodigy fire starters on, by the way. I The only problem with these is I'd want to wear them and they're a little bit pricey to take around the town. All right, I, people who are watching this, I'm gonna make this a short review because I love them. They're, they're, they're as good as everyone else. I was literally just on YouTube and I keep seeing IE600, the redemption arc. You know, they're, they're finally back. The Sennheiser's done it. Uh, and they're right. They have. But are you going to use these out and about? Are you going to take them on a plane? Are you bring them to a hotel? Because all expensive IEMs, I'm a little bit like sketchy. I'm like, uh, I have like three pairs of Nanas here. Every time they change the tuning or change the packaging, they send me another $900 Nana. But I never take them out, even though I could just lose one and not even cry. Because they're so fucking expensive, I don't want to take those out. I don't want to take... Like, a $200 IM is still nerve-wracking. You go to a store, it gets caught on something, it falls down. You, you, you put them in your pocket because you're, you're doing something, and they, oh my god, I lost it. So you got to realize with an $800 IM, that is quadrupled. The nervousness. But it does sound like this, which I... Ooh, gorillas. Yeah, no. This is a smooth, creamy, buttery, oak-smelling room filled with cigar smoke that actually makes you healthy and doesn't give you cancer. So I think Sennheiser can basically take a break now. They've run out of, of numbers. Unless they come out with the IE-1200... Which would have to be like $2,500? I think it ramps up exponentially with the number. Unless I come up with a $2,500 IM, and for the fucking love of God, Sennheiser, please don't make it a 7mm. Like, do me something else. I get it. You like your 7mm dy like dynamic. I like dynamics. I love dynamics. They're usually the one I go for. But if you're going to charge me three wholly different prices for the exact same shaped 
I am with the exact same wire and maybe an extra wire and the same accessories. We've got a box, we've got the, the Sennheiser ear goo picker, and then we've got the, change it up a little bit. Give me an experimental one. Give me one with two dynamics or just BAs. Did I not make BAs? That's the problem, they don't make BAs. They don't wanna buy a BA. They have to develop all the, v the fucking BAs. All right, either way, these things are fantastic. Anyone who already owns them, you've done well. If you've avoided the, well, you don't have to avoid the 300, that's great. If you've avoided the 900 and you wanted one anyway, this is the one to get. If you listen to audiobooks, like religiously, buy these. I didn't know why that's a thing, but buy them. If you want a game, these would game beautifully. I don't know why I say that, for the algorithm. Hey, what's up gamers? You got $800 to spend on an I am, bro? Get these. Although I, I still do wish they made just, I might, if I got a set, because this is loaned to me, if I got a set, I would probably surgically remove the foam and try to shove that into a Dakoni tip so I can get it just the right amount of, of dampening. But anyway, I'm done. These things are great. I will link to them wherever I find them since they were sent to me by a person. I could link to, they were on Amazon, they're out of stock, and they're also at Hi-Fi Go, so I'll link to Hi-Fi Go, who has them on sale for 800, they're usually nine. Uh, anything interesting here? Aviation grade Amloy Z001 amorphous metal shell. K. 18 ohms. Frequency response four to 46 and a half thousand. That's very specific. I'm not gonna read anything else. None of that shit matters. What matters is, does it fit Zeos's ear with the accessories it has? Is the wire annoying? And how the fuck does it sound? Well, it sounds like the best I am Sennheiser's made and I'm glad they got there. Wallpaper in the uh, wallpaper sink below, or you could use the, the code to figure out how to get to Imgur. Um, Patreon subscribe star, support this channel. Uh, don't forget to check out uh, Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forums. If you want to see these reviews early, $5 a month on either Patreon or subscribe star gets you that. Let's you join the yard sales, which this won't be in. I might, do I sell the 300s? I've got them for so long now. Whatever. Point is, yard sales for five, $5 tier, first to the 10th of every month. Uh, loss of sound demos. Don't forget to check out the second channel. Don't forget to check out the $10 support tier where you get into private behind the scenes Telegram chat and a swap meet that you're in for life once you're in there. And then we're done. And then we're good wallpapers, things. And I'm going to go make a sandwich. And I'm, I'm going to take, take these with me because I'm going to make that sandwich good.